So, I had this on my shelf for a little bit, and I decided to read through it. And, well, hello, fellow bookquesters, it is I, Aaron the Bookquester, and today I have this great, awesome book, Lord of the Flies, by William Golding himself, and, well, let's get right on to it. Kids. Kids from 6 to 13. They have been stranded on a deserted island. And from those, Ralph, a kid, was charisma, and Piggy, a kid who's a bit on the fat side with glasses and has asthma. Ralph becomes the chief of this group of boys. And together, they make this sort of society within the island in order to survive and wait for rescue to come. They also go up the mountain and create a smoke signal that they could set off in an instant if any other ships came along and they could see the smoke, check it out, and hopefully rescue them. And basically, that's what's happening. That's what happened so far. And that's like that typical Robinson Crusoe Swiss Family Robinson thing. And yeah, that's, that's it. It's just a normal survival story. Well, it starts to get weird. You see, Jack Meredith, the kid who is the leader of the choir, well, the former choir anyway, they, what are they going to do, sing in the jungle and food will come to them? No, now they're known as the hunters and they hunt food. Jack Meredith is being a little bit weird. He seems to be jealous of Ralph and his leadership. And he hunts meat. And he has a bit of a, almost a crazy need to kill animals. And hunt them down and eat them. Something, something seriously wrong with that guy. And of course, there's this talk of the beast. A silent beast that is slow enough to be not followed, to run away from. But also does not leave any footprints on the bottom and the ground. This sort of horrific monster. And meanwhile, things are getting more and more insane. Jack has completely forsaken the beacon, the light, and the rescue. Instead, he has split the society into two groups. One group followed Jack, and they were known as the Hunters, or the Tribe. And basically, all they did all day was hunt, eat, and feast. Meanwhile, Ralph, he got things done. He had the beacon, he had shelters, and he tried to take care of the little ones, the ones who were six and six or younger, and little too young to take care of themselves. And basically, this society has split into two, and it's complete chaos and anarchy. And then, Jack crosses the line. He steals the glasses of Piggy, because, you know, they use those glasses to make fire. And they, and they took Piggy's glasses, and when Piggy and Jack, and yeah. And of course, on the first day of the tribe, they killed someone. They hounded up on one person, a Simon, who was coming out of the woods, who had been talking to this mysterious entity known as the Lord of the Flies. Simon comes out of the into the clearing, and, and these Boys, they think he's the beast, or the, the this beastie creature who, who apparently kills kids or whatever. And together they go with their wooden spears and they kill Simon, the innocent an innocent young boy like that. And his body's washed into the sea. And then when after, of course, Jack married you and this tribe of theirs, the savages take Piggy's specs or glasses. They go back to take it back, but no, Jack is completely psycho, and he kills Piggy as well, and then he leads another hunt to find and kill Ralph. But alas, just before Ralph could be found and killed, an adult, a navy man, a navy lieutenant comes with his cruiser, finds the boys, and rescues them. And yeah. So 
basically a couple things. I saw like the beast was actually like a real thing. Like it's completely gonna turn into a fantasy novel, and there's gonna be a, a giant fly that kills people. I mean, okay, that's that's a thing. But I don't really think the fly was actually a real thing. The beast was a real thing. I think, and they say the boys say it a couple times. I'm afraid of us. I'm afraid of humans. And I think that this fly represents the bad, savage part within each human being. And that's what I think. That's what I think now after I've read the whole book. And meanwhile, what does the Lord of the Flies, this mysterious entity that spoke with Simon, represent? Well, I read the end of the book, the little foreword part. Uh, no, um, notes on the Lord of the Flies, I read this part, and basically what it said was that Lord of the Flies translated into Greek is basically the word for the devil. You know, the symbol of chaos, of anarchy, of against society, basically the opposite of all good, and the god of the savages. In fact, in the book, they're afraid of the beast, and they, or, or the Lord of the Flies, and they kind of like try to goad him, I guess. They like after they kill an animal, they chop off the animal's head and put it on a stake as an offering to the beast so that the beast would leave them alone or something. And that all in all just feels like a sacrifice, like you know, a tribe does or a Native American tribe does or something like that. So that's almost like a religion at that point. And I mean, the devil is. The one who kind of like, well, in this book anyway, or religiously, is kind of the person who is worshipped by really bad people and like kind of tricks people into worshipping him in many ways. And that's basically what happens. So that's, okay, so I know the plot is really, really chaotic. It's just, it's just a normal survival story except the kids go crazy and kill each other. But the symbolic meaning... The book itself was trying to show us the flaws of society tracing back into the flaws of human nature. And the guy who wrote this well in Golding, he was completely aware of that. In fact, he treated the book as some sort of imaginary social experiment. And all in all, I think this was an amazing read. Although I was a bit creeped out, honestly. Like the Lord of the Flies thing and the kids killing each other thing. Not exactly my type of book to read. But anyway, it was a great book to read. And like always, your book was sure, and your book was sure. Yeah, read it if you want. It's a very deep book, and it might take a while to understand it. But all in all, it was a very tense, well-paced, and very symbolic book. Bye!